Okay, I have a 2013 RAV4 EV. Fifty nine kilometers. Car ready is system check. Check EV system. Okay. Let's see what warnings we have here. So I've got Trouble codes in the EV system. Let's see. P312F. This is the warning that just basically says, hey, there's something wrong with the Tesla powertrain. If I check the freeze frame, it's gonna show the subcode is uh Four four eight. Yeah, that's the subcode I'd expect. That uh, that DTC. Okay. Uh, let's just restart this to make sure that we're showing the live data. I'll launch the Tesla powertrain diagnostics. Close the freeze frame data window. And let's just wait for the powertrain diagnostics to open. There we go. Okay. So, currently active alerts. There are no active alerts and there's no alerts in the history. If I just go up here to the battery. EMS drive, contact is closed, enough power for drive, interlock's good. Thermal controls for good. Just show the firmware at the gateway. Firmware version 13101, that's the latest version for the gateway. This is uh, Tesla Powertrain Diagnostics 1146, the latest version that's available. So, no alerts. If I go into the Tesla, or the, sorry, the Toyota Power, or uh, Toyota Techstream, it's all that alert. Let's try and clear it. Clear. I just heard the instrument cluster beep. It's going to refresh. And the code is still here. The code did not go away. And it won't go away. No matter how many times you clear it, as long as the battery pack is communicating with the vehicle, that code will stay. So. My diagnostic steps up until this point were there's the Tesla gateway there. I've checked its power and its ground, constant power and switched ignition power. They're good. I've checked the CAN bus lines at the module and at the DLC. They are good. I have checked the Toyota powertrain control module located in the, behind the glove box 
the EV system module. It's can lines, it's powers, switch and constant, and grounds are all good. I have checked the high voltage battery up there at its connector, every wire at that connector, referencing Toyota service info of what it should be. And all the data values are good there. Just to be sure, I've got a battery charger on the car, so it always has 13.6 volts. Doesn't make any effect for right now, the voltage. So at that point, it would seem that power and ground is good. It's now for most of these modules. So now I started doing some disconnecting of the powertrain bus to figure out and isolate where the problem may be with the vehicle. So what I did Let me turn the car off. Power off. It's off. Steering locked. Let's close the door. Now, so here we've got the right hand engine compartment fuse box. We are gonna pull this fuse here, right there, which is fuse HV battery, 10 amp. That fuse supplies the constant battery power from the 12 volt battery to the high voltage battery. Which is needed for the high voltage battery to communicate with the vehicle. Now, I'm gonna get in the car, key on. We have no communications with the high voltage battery. That's why it's showing the invalid range of 289. We're gonna go back here to the tech stream. Let's go codes. Oh, and the Tesla powertrain right now. It's no alerts. Battery. No data from the battery shown. So it is not communicating with the high voltage battery. There is no alerts. Let's go down to tech stream and try and clear the code. And no codes. No codes. So with the high voltage battery not receiving power, TechStream is not identifying any codes or a reason for the gateway to be commanding codes. But there's no communication with the high voltage battery, so we need to figure out what's wrong. Now, if I put that fuse back in, the code would come back right away. So it, that's kind of looking like it's there's a high voltage battery issue. Something on the BMS is acting up. Something is wrong internally. So I happen to have a parts car, a wrecked write-off car that uh, we have a bunch of parts in, and one of those parts was the high voltage battery pack. So I just quickly pulled that out. Took 15 minutes on the hoist. Let's shut off the car. Let's 
go under here. Disconnect the installed high voltage battery and plug in the spare high voltage battery I have, which this battery was functioning in the vehicle it came out of a couple months ago, from probably more like four month, four or five months ago. So this battery is known to be good and it was about 45% charged when it came out of that or when that vehicle was written off. So this battery is good. It was working. So let's put the fuse put this fuse back in. Fuse is installed. Okay. I need my stool. Sure. No, we are not going to re try and ready the car because it does not have the high voltage lines connected. But for what we are doing, we just want the BMS connected so we can see if it's setting codes in the Tesla powertrain or in the Toyota powertrain management. Key on. Okay, so it's just under half charged. That's what it showed from the car before. Check EV system. Let's go back here. Tech stream aired out just because of the key cycle. So let's go back to trouble codes. So the code's there, same exact code as before. In the Tesla powertrain, just to show that we do, in fact, have communications with the the second battery pack. Let's go to battery. User display state of, state of charge, thirty-eight percent. That sounds about right for what it was when it uh, came out. BMS standby. Enough power for drive. Interlock status good. The high voltage disconnect is installed in this spare battery pack. Just so those errors are not showing up. So it thinks the battery pack is good. Which it is. We have no alerts here. No reason for this vehicle to think there's anything wrong with this battery pack. All looks good there. I did run the firmware download to vehicle function here on this battery pack already. That did not make any difference in what I'm about to show. Open text stream. There's that powertrain control module requested MIL. I'm gonna attempt to clear the code. Clear. The code does not clear, it stays. So that would lead you to think there is not something wrong with the battery pack because I just swapped the battery pack and the code's still there. But with the battery pack unplugged, the code is cleared, clearable. So that makes it sound like there might be a some other module in the car is faulting. So, right there is a spare gateway module from the parts car that I attempted to install in this vehicle. Did not make a difference. And over here, I have the power management control ECU, the Toyota ECU, that lives behind the glove box of the car that interfaces between the powertrain bus and the vehicle bus. That's setting the code. That's this module here, the EV module, electric propulsion control module. I've tried swapping that out, no change. 
So, as of right now, it would look like there is, there should be nothing causing this warning light, because two different batteries, same cause, battery's unplugged, or battery has no power, no constant power from its fuse, warning light goes away. I have tried disconnecting the onboard charger, the DC to DC converter, and the drive motor with a jumper in the CAN bus lines to allow it to continue on to the battery with no effect either. The code can only be cleared if the high voltage battery pack, either high voltage battery pack, does not have power or is unplugged from the vehicle. Now this spare battery pack drove in the car it came out of and the battery pack that is currently bolted into this car drives in this car. It drives and charges just fine. No seeming issues. Car seems to have full power available. Actually, if you go in to the data list in TechStream, you can see discharge and charge control value. TechStream is allowing, or TechStream is reporting that it is allowed to output 135 kilowatts and charge at 12. That's slightly different than the battery pack that's installed in the vehicle, but it is still a decent amount of power. It seemed, you wouldn't really notice that amount of output difference. And TechStream is, is reading this spare battery pack at 38% with 10 kilowatts remaining. So, if anyone has any ideas of where to look next, or what could be the cause, I'm all ears, because I've been fighting this, uh, fighting this issue for a couple weekends now, and I am at a loss of where to go next, because uh, it would seem that there's an issue with the batteries, but as I've just shown, two different battery packs, both that drive the vehicle just fine, both that charged just fine, are setting the same error code. The P312F. Electric Propulsion Control Module Requested MIL Illumination. And I am at a loss of what is actually causing that light, or causing that warning. Because uh, I've gone through all my options at this point. 